Chrome hearts on my body, I'm a man of steel. Still rapidly taking all these drugs, I'm not sure how to feel. Hello buddy, my name is Pix and I'm back with another video. So in this video, I'll teach you how to make this 3D stroke buildup in Star Vegas Pro. Now this is the third upload this week, so if you want me to keep going, then show some support by liking the video and I'll make sure to keep going. But before we start, I'd like to remind you that I've teamed up with Skirmish once again to host another $100 tournament with my Zen teammate SD7. Now what Skirmish is, is a free to download tournament app that hosts real money tournaments every day. You can play a variety of game modes including Zone Wars, Box Fight, Realistics and more. And if you want to join the Zen SD7 tournament which is happening on the Sunday February 20th from 4 to 6 p.m. GMT time, simply click the link in the description, download the app and sign up for the tourney. And that's about it, so let's begin with the video. Alright, and here we are in Star Vegas Pro. So if you wanna get everything that I use in the video, this will be linked in the description in the Google Drive. But anyways, what we have over here is a clip that basically goes like this. So what you wanna do is find the point where the guy pulls out his shotgun and stops editing. So for me, it is over here. What you wanna do is cut on the clip like this. And then what you wanna do is go 50 frames forward. So double click over here, backspace plus 50 like this and then click M to mark it. So this is 50 frames spaced out like this. And now what we're gonna do is apply Twixter. So go to video effects and search for Twixter and either apply Twixter Pro or Twixter. And once you have that applied, what you wanna do is animate the speed percentage. So click on animate and you know, make sure this button is clicked like this, make sure it's blue. And now what you wanna do is go at the start like this, then go five frames forward, one, two, three, four, five at the point and set that to 50%. Then you wanna go on the marker, so over here at the point and then go five frames back. So one, two, three, four, five, and then set that to 10. This will make a marker like this. Now go back on the marker and go five frames forward. One, two, three, four, five, and you can add a point like this. So change this on the marker to 300, so something like this. And now we're gonna change the animation. So right click on the first point, set it to slow fade, second point right click, slow fade, and then this one is slow fade, and on the middle right click, fast fade. So something like this is fine. Now what we're gonna do is update our main background motion sensitivity. So basically every time you change a value in Twixter Pro, what you wanna ahead and do is change this by 0.5. So change it to something like this and the Twixter Pro will unglitch. So now just check if you are on the kill and as you can see, I'm not, I'm like, you know, past that. So what I'm gonna do is go somewhere in the middle and basically add a keyframe and set that to 10. And of course, update your frames by 0.5. And as you can see, I'm still not on the kill. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this point somewhere around here and see if I'm on the kill. And as you can see, I am on the kill and I've kind of got this perfect. So this is how it looks like. And if you're having problems, like it's not on the kill, you can always change this to five. Um, you can always add a point like this, change it to five as well, or you can change these points. So it's, you know, all customizable. But once you have your tweaks are ready, you wanna change the background, you know, to a little bit darker. So what you wanna do is search for color corrector and pick the secondary one and then apply the default one. And all we're gonna change is the saturation and gamma. So drag the saturation down like this to your liking and then drag gamma as well. So something like this is fine and you want to animate this. So animate gamma and saturation like that. Now find the keyframes. So mine are over here and drag them all the way to where it says 15. So as you can see it says 0.15. So this is on the 15th frame. And now what you wanna do is go at the start and restart these to one. So this will like sort of fade in into the dark. And now we want them to like, you know, end over here. So what we're gonna do is click on, on this and then add a point, this will add two points. And now just go like two frames out and then set them back to one. So this will do this. And now this is optional, but what you can apply is Vignette. So search for Vignette, then apply S underscore Vignette. And what you wanna do is mess with the radius. So drag that a little bit, you know, to the right like this, and this should be fine. So what you wanna do is animate radius, go down and drag the radius keyframe to the 15 frame. So something like this where color correction is. And at the start, make sure it is like, you know, dragged all the way to two. So something like this, and this will fade in the Vignette like that. And you can do the same thing as color correction. So go over here where the marker is, add a point and then go two frames forward, one, two, and make this to two like that. So this will fade it out. Now, before you do anything, just go to Twixter real quick and change this 
by 0.5 so i'm gonna change it to 72 and this will make sure you know there are no bugs after you apply the other presets but now what we're gonna do is render out this part so highlight from here all the way to the marker and then just basically render it out so file render as and then make sure your resolution matches your project resolution like this once everything is done you can just name this whatever you want and click render once the render file is finished, you can drag that in. And if you want to ungroup the audio track from the video, click U to ungroup this and delete the audio track. Now what we're gonna do is make two new video tracks. So right click on the track, insert video track, and insert video track, and place your rendered video on top over here. Now over here, we're gonna place an overlay. So drag in your stroked overlay and make sure it is edited, not the original. So here we have the edited one. I'm gonna ungroup it from here and place it in the middle, just like this. Now what you wanna do is mute the top audio track. So click on this button and you'll be able to see your overlay. Now I wanna apply the overlay preset that is in the ghoul drive. So here's the overlay preset. I'm gonna apply it onto the overlay and this is how it looks like. So you can kind of customize it. So if you go to hue set bright, you can enable that. And then if you drag your, you know, hue shift, you can customize the colors, make it all sorts of, you know, different colors. And if you only want one color, then you can disable cloud psycho and then use hue set bright to change the color like this. But I'm going to keep it like this and I'm good to go. So now what you want to do is unmute the video track that just muted. And now you want to mask out the top video. So go to pan and crop on the top video, then enable masking over here. And you have to follow these steps very carefully or you might mess up. The first thing, grab your pencil and make a mask in the middle of the skin. Don't make it like below, just somewhere in the middle. Now, since we want this 3D, we need to mask out the parts that's supposed to go on top of the overlay. So as you can see, this goes around the skin, which is fine. And then as you can see, this starts touching and this part has to go in front of the skin. So check the part where it's touching. As you can see, it's touching over here. So you wanna go a frame back where it's not touching and then add a keyframe like this. Then go here, so a frame forward where it starts touching. And now just check where the overlay is going. So as you can see, it's touching his waist. So we're gonna sort of mask out the waist only. So what I'm gonna do is go over here, memorize where it is. So it's over here, gonna reset the mask and mask out the waist. So from somewhere around here, this and to somewhere around here. So this is fine. And now if you forward the video, as you can see, it goes in front of the skin. And if you want to move this, you can select this deselect and then fix the mask yourself or you can right click select all and then move this however you like like this but yeah the first part is fine and as you can see it's touching again but this time we wanted to go you know behind the skin so we might need to fix the mask so let's see so let's add a point over here and on this point i'm gonna sort of you know make this mask like that so that this overlay can go through so that is fine and now we wanted to go you know in front of the skin again so instead of masking this what we're gonna do is make a new mask and we're gonna check where it goes so as you can see we need to mask the arm and sort of you know the back shoulders so let's go to this point before it starts touching let's add a point and on this point let's mask it out so let's mask out the arm Boom. something like this is fine as you can see it goes behind the skin and what you might want to do is as you can see the skin mask sort of shows the glow so you might want to make this longer a bit as you can see this, this is probably a bit short so i'm just gonna extend it like this and hopefully the glow doesn't show that much anymore so it's a bit better now as you can see it goes like this and everything is fine and you might want to fix this as well so right click select all and then you can fix it like that boom just like this and boom, as you can see, I've done the masks. So to sort of rewind what I did, as you can see, I masked out the middle. And once the skin started touching me, masked out the part where it was touching me. So over here, then I wanted the overlay to go behind my skin. So I did this. I waited, I waited. And once the other part of this overlay started touching me, I wanted to go in front of it. So I masked out the top part. As you can see, did this and then, you know, I finished it off, did nothing and boom, the overlay disappeared like that. So this is how it looks like. And what we're going to do now is render it out. So highlight from the start over here all the way to somewhere around here and then, you know, render it out. So file, render as, make sure the frame size is the same as this. And once you know everything is fine, name this whatever you want and click render. Now, once the render is finished, you can either delete these or keep them, whatever, but replace them with your rendered file. Um, then you can delete the audio track and then apply the impact preset. So impact preset is over here. I'm gonna apply it onto the video. And if you've done everything correctly, everything should work. And the impact, you know, should be synced like this. 
if you got any questions make sure to join my discord server and leave them in there but yeah my name is pixie thanks so much for watching i'm out